Hello there, how are you doing? Hope you've had a good week. Welcome to this week's Seconds Out. Now, my guests this week are a bantamweight and a middleweight. They don't actually know each other because one's not from the region as usual, but he does train here, which is the middleweight, Mr. Matthew Macklin. How are you, doing? How are you Matt? You all right? Yeah, good. And Reese Roberts, hey, man, the bantamweight. Right? You put the jacket on to try and uh, look, a, a, look a bit heavier. Yeah. <laughs> Got a few pounds on him. That's it. How, how are you going? You all right? Yeah, I'm not too bad, are you? Yeah, you've both been on the show before, haven't you? Yeah. Do you like the, uh, the different set? I know, it's a lot better, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Going up in the world by now. That's it, yeah. Well, we're nearly coming to the end of the series now, but I wanted to get you both on. Reese, we've seen you recently in the papers, um, along with your, your club mate Scott, signing on with Ricky. And we had Matthew on there the other week. He was chatting about that, Matthew asking. Yeah. So that must be pretty exciting to do that. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's a brilliant opportunity for me, you know, to, to show people what I'm about and that. And with Ricky and with his experience and he's doing everything, you know, the proper way. Mm. He's giving us a chance to get out there and, and shine, do you know what I mean? And there's a lot of sharks in this game, isn't there, as I've discovered the last two or three years, but um, to get on with someone like Ricky who's been there and done it. That's it, well, like I said, he's got the experience, and he's been with like most of the big promoters and yeah. he knows the way to do it and not to, you know, rip his fighters off. Well, yeah, and he'll treat, he'll treat in general, he'll treat his fighters good. That's well. it, and he's and a nice guy as well, you know. Of course he's, he is. He's got his feet on his ground and that. Yeah, and uh, Matthew, you trained with Ricky as well, didn't you? Yeah, trained with him for about I think nearly five years, four and a half, five years. Good guy, you know. Like I said, been been through been through it all. Still mm. still going strong. Mm. And uh, you know, he'll probably carry the fact that he's the biggest drawer in boxing. Certainly, this side of the Atlantic and probably in the top two or three, even in America. So he'll, he'll, he carries a lot. Of, his name carries a lot of weight. Mm. And any, any opportunities, any television deals that are going, I'm sure they'll be put his way. Yeah, and we've got a top show lined up tonight because we're going to see recent action from his last fight. I might even show a little snippets of your Jamie Moore fight as well, Matthew. <laughs> just because everyone still talks about it, you know. Yeah. I, know we, I know we showed it last time you were on, but um, it was just one of those amazing fights. I know you, you ended up not winning it in the end, yeah. but it was an amazing night, wasn't it? No, it was a great fight, and I'm sure it'll probably... Like I say, any time I fight, any time Jamie fights, the commentators, they, mm. they, they do tend to, to, to refer to it. I mean, it was probably... You know, it, it'll probably go down in history with, with the great British title fights yeah. and... Uh, so it was fight of the year domestically that year, and uh, I think anyone who was there that night won't forget it. And obviously, me and Jamie will never forget it. Yeah. And uh, ironically, now he's fighting for the European title, you know, and I'm fighting for the British middleweight title yeah. within a week of each other. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's strange how things work out, and yeah. you never know. Uh, maybe one day Jamie steps up to middle. Maybe we'll do it all again. Yeah, because um, you've changed weight since then. What? Yeah, well, after I mean, when I fought Jamie. 11 stone that was the only time in about two or th I think two or three years that I'd actually made the light middle weight limit and I'd always been camp campaigning as a light middle but I'd been uh, you know four three four pounds above the weight every time and uh, I'd, I'd even won the Irish middleweight title so it was uh, when I dropped down to 11 stone I fought Jamie you know the, Jamie fought a great fight but I didn't feel myself I felt that making that weight had had taken its toll yeah. and uh, I kind of paid for it a bit in the later rounds um, and uh, so after that fight, I stepped up to middleweight, and I've had I think I think six or seven fights since. Yeah. Not too sure, but feeling good. And now I've uh, had a tough fight last time out against Gerhard Ajetovic, and um, that went ten. I won that on points, but uh, after that I got made mandatory right. challenger for the British middleweight title. So uh, I'm fighting Wayne Alcox, the champion. He's from Birmingham. Yeah. Obviously, I'm from Birmingham. So it's, uh, I mean, it's being billed as the Battle of Brumman. Yeah, it should be good. Sure, it will be. He's, I'd, I've never met him. He's a friend of a friend of mine in Birmingham. I've got a few yeah. mates down there, and uh, you know, there's again people have been saying, I think he'll Matthew will win. I think yeah, Alcock it's, will it's, win. It's fifty. Well, it's, it's reminiscent of the Moore fight, and you know, maybe uh, I think having gone through the fight with Jamie, I think I'll uh, that will hold me in good stead for this fight. You know, there'll be a lot of yeah. talk, a lot of you know hype, a lot of uh, rubbish talk spoken, and. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe maybe if I was a few years younger and less experienced. Maybe that would, those things might have might be factors in the fight. You know, and how the fight goes. But you know, uh, the fact that I'm out of Birmingham, training in Manchester, yeah. and I've been through that before. I think that will all hold me in good stead come the night. Definitely. And, I, and I've um, no money in it, but I've had a bit of a bet with my mate Herbie. So you've got to uh, yeah. make sure that prove you right. Yeah, prove you're right. <laughs> yeah. Reese, um, do you remember much about that fight we were just chatting about there? With, uh, yeah, I was there actually. Was you? Yeah, it was an exciting fight, wasn't it? They, these big bills now, you'll, be, you'll start to get on them, won't you? You've always been involved in, in good bills anyway, being at Brian Hughes's gym, but now that you sign on with Ricky, you're going you're gonna to get involved in some big nights, aren't you? Yeah, well, that's it, hopefully. Get some, like, you know, get my name out there because I'm on bigger shows than that. Mm. Um, I'm on one on the 28th of March. It's my first fight for Ricky's promotions. Right. And uh, uh, Matthew Hatton's topping the bill. And uh, I just can't wait to get out there now. 
You uh, were a kickboxer, weren't you, as a young lad? Yeah, I used to do kickboxing before I started boxing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you also do a bit of uh, styling. <laughs> Remember we sent Thomas well, down for his haircut? So no. <laughs> Is that just something should, should things not work out? Well, you always need something to fall back on, don't you? But mm. I enjoy it, you know, it takes my mind off boxing. Yeah. And it's good to socialise as well. Mm. So well, I do enjoy it. Matthew, have you got uh, anything to fall back on? Should it all go no, to Pete No, I'm sure I'll work some out <laughs> after. <laughs> well, you've, been in, you've been involved with some good trainers, haven't you? Um, yeah, I, um, I've been through a few. I mean, I get, get a bit of flack whenever they mention this. They all seem to laugh about it. But, uh, you know, I turned I turn pro sort of out of the blue, really. I was going to stay. I, I very much wanted to box in the Olympics. And I, was, I won the ABAs when I was 18, senior ABAs. I'd been on the um, Olympic squad. I was on the funding from. I was like the top class junior, and uh, having won the ABAs, my, my next goal was the Commonwealth Games, and then the Olympics three years, three, two years after the Commonwealth Games. Mm -hmm. But um, I, was, I won the ABAs pretty impressively, and offers started coming in, and uh, I ended up, I ended up uh, deciding to turn pro. But it all happened very quickly, and I ended up staying um, in Birmingham to train in the gym that I'd been training as an amateur. Yeah. So I, I had my first two years there, really, but I never really felt that I never... I always knew I was never going to see my career out there. It was just a case of, you know, you'd have a fight, you'd think, well, I'll move after this one. You'd have a week off, socialising, <laughs> and then uh, next thing you'd be back in the gym, you'd have another date. So I never really got the chance to move on. And then uh, when, I, when I lost to uh, Faisy for the English title, you know, I'd only, had no, I'd only had nine fights at the time, and I was doing a ten-round. I was probably rushed looking back. Mm. And, um, and I thought I'd won the fight anyway, but after that fight, I didn't box as well as I could have. So we, I sat down, I thought about things, and, and, and I moved up to Manchester and I trained with Billy Graham. Mm. And I was with Billy then for, like, I think, four and a half years. But since then, I've, I left Billy uh, after the May with a fight. It was time to move on, and uh, I trained with Buddy McGirt for a fight against Jury Boy Campus, which I won in Ireland. And then I went back there to train with him for another fight. Uh, having signed back with Frank Warren and the show got pulled, disputes with Satanta or whatnot, and Frank mm. Warren, the show got pulled. And um, I was fighting then a few weeks later uh, on the Amir Khan bill against Prescott. That's right, yeah. So instead of going, it would have been, you know, it was a lot of travelling back and forth to back to America. So uh, I decided to train at Richie Woodall's and see how it went. Now, Woodall was over in New, uh, Beijing commentating on the Olympics. But, you know, I got an OK at the gym and we had the fight. The fight was round the corner, so we, I prepared best I could. Richie came back the week before. We had that fight. I did OK. I won a 10-round points decision uh, over a tough African. And um, I wanted to give it a proper go with Richie. Like, yeah. it wasn't fair basing, uh, sort of passing judgment on that show because we'd only spent a week together. So then we had six or seven weeks uh, for the next fight. And, uh, again, I won it, but I didn't feel as good as I could have done. So... I find myself back in Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm back in... Uh, and ironically, again, I'm back in the same gym that I used to train in with yeah. Billy Graham, yeah. although, you know... Joe Gallagher is now, Joe Gallagher is now the, the man training me. Brilliant. Right, Rhys, I did ask for long answers as well, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to have a look at you in action. This is... Uh, when was it? December? Yeah, 6th uh, of December. In Wigan, right. This is Rhys on his last outing out in December. <laughs>
That was pretty good. Is it, uh, was that your first knockout then, Reese? My first knockout, yeah. You'll have to say thanks to your mate for uh, letting us use that footage as well. Ah, oh, will do. That was impressive, that one, in Matthew. Yeah, good shot. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, six, six and oh. Six and oh. It's all now. going in the right direction, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Just keep training hard and keep winning. That's the main thing. And we had Scott on the other week. He's, a, he's another lad that a lot of people are excited about. Yeah, Scott Quick. Your name yeah. pops up a lot. You know, people say Reese and Scott down at Bryan's. And yeah. There's a lot of people excited about you. The two super bantam weeks at Bryan's, yeah. Is that going to put a bit of pressure on people to sort of hyping you up like that, or do you just get on with it? I just get on with it, me. I, I don't really listen to anyone. I just listen to my trainers and, you know, close people around me, keep my feet on the ground and just keep training hard. Mm. And just train towards a, a world title. It's a great gym as well, isn't it? Obviously, because, you know, the, the lads you've got there, Jennings, we're going to see later on, and yeah. Thomas always acting a goat down there, just sort of <laughs> livening the place up a bit, isn't it? It's, it's a good atmosphere and we all train hard and we all stick together and help each other out. Yeah. That's the main thing. It's important that as well, Matthew, isn't it, in the gym to have a laugh? It's, it's, a, it's a hard sport, isn't it? You don't need to be making it sort of any more mundane <laughs> or any harder than it already is. So, yeah. you know, a bit of a bit of crack in the gym as well, and it always helps, doesn't it? Because even though it's a painful sport and you have to, you know, make a lot of sacrifices, there's a lot of people watching this now that I think would love to be doing it rather than getting up Monday mornings and going in their office or on a building oh, site definitely. or whatever. Well, you know, it, it is hard and sometimes you think, God, this is, this is tough and I wish I could be doing this and I wish I could be doing that and I didn't have to do this. But then when, it, when you think back when I was younger, you know, sort of, 11, 12, 13, 14, this is where I always wanted to be, this is always what I wanted to do, so, you know, it is hard, but mm. I'm lucky because, like you say, we live, I'm living what I've always dreamt about living, yeah. where, you know, if I had to be doing something else, it would be, that would be harder because it would be more, that would be boring. Because you like, you're, you know, you're like myself, you like to socialise, as you call that's it, and it, go out and have it. a laugh, don't you? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Oh, that's what it's all about. I'm in that. <laughs> <laughs> right, listen, lads, we're going to take a break now, but in part two, we're going to hear from Jennings before his massive fight on Saturday night, because, of course, he's one of Reese's stable mates. Uh, so make sure you join us for that. See you in a couple of minutes. Bye. <laughs> Welcome back to part two of Seconds Out. I am with, now then, the middleweight <laughs> Irish champion. Yeah? Yeah, middleweight. Uh, Matthew Macklin. See, I nearly forgot your name then. Yeah. So many boxes, Matthew, come in. And Reese, uh, super bantam. What's the difference in a super bantam and a bantam? Five About ounce. two grains of sugar <laughs> or something. Four pounds, isn't it? I mean, yeah, yeah, six and eight, ten. Is it? What, what do you weigh? When, uh, fighting weight, what do you weigh? About 8, 10. And do you, do you ever, like, put much weight on? Because you're quite... Not really, just a couple of pounds, you know, something to train off. I never balloon up mm. half a stone or anything like that. Do you not drink? No, I don't drink no. at all. Good man. It's wise, isn't it? Yeah, very wise. Do you uh, struggle to make the weight sometimes? Yeah, I've, yeah, I've always been big at the weights. I've always struggled, really, you know. I was struggling when I turned pro at welterweight. Yeah. I was struggling to death to make that. And then it looked a lot middle, I was struggling to make that. Now I'm, <laughs> now I'm struggling to make middle. But uh, no, I mean, it, it's a healthy struggle at middleweight. You know, I'm yeah. very, once I get down, I feel very strong. You know, I do, I do go up in between, but I think, you know, I put 10 or 12 pounds on from the way into the fight. So you're going you're gonna to put another sort of six or seven pounds on then if you start. Yeah. Stop the training and, you know, have a few drinks and a few nice meals. You're going to put six or seven pounds on. So. A few, I love the way you put that, a few drinks and a few nice meals. Yeah, I think it's good sometimes to have a bit to lose, you, something to work at as well, isn't oh, it? Yeah, it gives you somewhere to go, doesn't mm. it? You know, I, I think sometimes you need to get a little bit unfit to, in order to... It's like peaking and troughing, isn't it? You can't yeah. stay, you know, on a, a footballers do a pre-season, they can sort of maintain their fitness playing every week, but boxing, it's like, you know, you've got eight, eight to ten weeks of a training camp and you just want to hit that peak for the night. Mm. So as soon as you beat Wayne Alcock, hope he's not watching, because I yeah. sometimes go out in Birmingham, yeah. Uh, after that, what you'll have a couple of weeks where you'll enjoy yourself and then yeah, get back in the gym? you know, a week, two weeks. Um, it'll, I'll have to, have to, once I win this fight, I'll have to sit down with Frank Warren and see when he wants me to uh, make my first defence. Yeah. And then, um, then, I'll, then I'll evaluate how, whether I can have a week or two or yeah. three. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and Reese, we just talking about there, you know, not losing weight, but obviously you probably just put a couple of pounds on and then straight back in the gym. Yeah, that's it. I always like to keep in trim, you know, and keep ticking over in the gym. I don't want to go rusty or anything like that. How much time would you have off after a fight? We have a week off and then we're back in the gym. Because you, you are, Brian was telling me, you're one of them fighters that, you know, sometimes you have to chase out of the gym. Yeah, that's it. You've got to <laughs> practice. Practice makes perfect, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, we came down, uh, Matthew. You would, have, you would have been impressed with this one. Jenny's did 45 minutes. I don't know if you've ever done that without stopping. He's pretty much getting tag teamed by four boxers, just yeah. getting in and just levering him. Bo he's boxing with him. He's always been. I think he's always been a very fit, fit fighter, hasn't he? Oh yeah, you know it's one of the He's always been sort of bouncing, even in the sort of twelfth round. So yeah. 
You know, and he's got good hand, nice bucks, nice combinations, good bucks. Uh, you know, it's, it's a big ask, but you know, he's fighting one of the genuine superstars in boxing, isn't he? Yeah. But yeah. I think he's definitely uh, better than people give him credit for. Like I think, he's, you know, he's he's very sort of underrated. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, please gotta wish him all the best. Great, he can do he could grind him down, couldn't he, Jennings? He's that sort of fighter. That's it. He's so fit. If he keeps his game plan, you know, I think he can steal the fight. Move round him and not yeah. get involved in one of them scraps that Cotter would, would love. Well, Cotter's not the quickest quickest of foot fighters, you know, yeah. he kind of likes you to sort of stand in front of him a bit more, so, you know, it'll be, Mark's definitely uh, got a chance. Right, well, I went down there last week to catch up with Jennings just before he jetted off on Saturday to New York, uh, so let's hear from him, see him in action, and also hear from Brian. <laughs> Brian, he's looking in good shape, isn't he? Oh, he's brilliant. Physically and mentally, he's, he's chopped that. Mm. Chopped that, no problem. And if it could have happened for a nicer lad, yeah. it couldn't have happened to anyone better than him. I think that's why so many people are behind him, because of him as a person as well as a fighter. Oh, yeah. I, I've had a lot of emails, you know, from different people in America mm. and over here. Yeah. And they're saying, what are you doing letting you fight a fellow like Cotto? Well, it's a chance in a lifetime. It's something that he's dreamed of all his life to box at the mecca of boxing, yeah. which is Madison Square Garden. And that's what he wants to do. You know, if we all had our own way, we'd say, well, we'd, we'd take the easy path. Mm. But he's taking the hardest path in the world. And I'm telling you, this, this fellow Cotto is a real... Mm. It, it's like, for, Ma for Michael, it's like climbing up Everest blindfolded. Yeah. But if anyone can do it, it's him because he's got that... British bulldog spirit. Yeah. He's like that all the time. You've got to chase him out of the gym. He does too much. Mm. And you've got to make sure that he didn't overdo it. That's why today was the hardest day and I was finished. Yeah. Tomorrow I'll just do pad work and then when we get to America he'll just be nice and sharp. Yeah. And he'll be ready for the night. How's that, Mike? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good, that. Nice and easy. <laughs> that was the rehearsal. You've got to go again now. I know, yeah. We did all that just for you. When yeah. you got fire off. Got to do another 45 minutes. Yeah. Only we get another set of lads in. Got nice and fresh. <laughs> yeah, that, that was mad, that. Is that normal to do that without having a break? 45 minutes? Um, Which is all your minutes added up, innit? That's that's your break including as well, like, you know what I mean? Normally, you're actually boxing for 36 minutes, but yeah. with, your, with your breaks including as well. Yeah. So, um, I don't know if it's normal or not, to be honest with you. But it's, I know it's, it's hard. Yeah. Build your stamina up and it gets your fitness 100%. We know how fit you are anyway. Do you reckon <laughs> for this fight, because it's such a big one, it's your biggest fight, that you're slightly even more fit than normal? Yeah, I mean, I'm 150% under, mm. focused, you know what I mean? Mm. I've got a lot of pride anyway, so I'm going to go into this battle with, you know, 100% confidence. I've got yeah. to, because if I don't believe in myself, then no one else oh, will believe in me. We've, we've you know said this mean? before so, that you're yeah. strong mentally anyway, yeah, haven't yeah. we? So, you know, I've got to go into it believing that I can do it. Yeah. You're not there to get his autograph, you're there to, to take his belt home, aren't you? So, you know, I'm not even bothered about, you know, obviously I know he's a brilliant fighter, but I'm not bothered about the status that he's at. I'm just bothered about winning. Yeah. I bet you're buzzing though, aren't you? If you think about, you know, top of the bill, Madison yeah. Square Garden. So I've been asked that before and most of it, it's like five years down the line when you look back, you know, yeah. so I was top of the bill at Madison Square Garden. No, the actual fight, you know, you find at Madison Square, it's not the big occasion that people think. It is a big occasion, don't get me wrong, it's, you know, but it's five years down the line when you look back and yeah, that's when, you, when you see it as a thing, right? When you're retired. Yeah. You deserve this anyway more than anyone. And e everyone, and I'm not just saying this, everyone's behind you. Cheers. Not just in the North Yeah, that's West, what I want. I want everyone to be behind me, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm going to do them proud no matter what. I'm going to give it 100% and that's all I can do. Ah. I give it 100%. Definitely. Uh, do you not feel sorry for us that are not going out there? Because we've got to stay up you know, late and watch it, drinking beers. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to be easy. Really, it's a shame. But uh, when you come back with that belt, um, we'll see you. We'll come on the show. Yeah, no worries. I'll come we'll, on with the belt. And we'll have a pint as well. Definitely. Michael, Cheers, all man. the best. Give, give, me, nice give me some love. <laughs> nice one, everyone. Mate. Cheers. And, and you personally, this is like the last thing that was missing from your CV, uh, topping the bill at the, at the garden. Yeah, there's two things that I, I haven't achieved in boxing. I'm, you know, I've helped to win most, uh, you know, all the titles, world titles, British, yeah. uh, 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 not the Commonwealth, European. And the only thing I'm missing in that is the Commonwealth, and Matthew Wall boxes for the Commonwealth title two <laughs> weeks after Michael's done right. that. And then uh, being at Madison Square Garden. I've been yeah. to America yeah. where we've boxed in Atlantic City and Las Vegas I've been there. Yeah. Where I've had lads boxing there. But I've not had anyone boxing in Madison Square Garden. But seriously, Ben, that doesn't make no difference to me. Right. The main thing is for the boxer. 
he's the main thing. I'm just like a, a bit part for him. And I'm just playing a, a, a role. And I'll make sure that he doesn't get hurt. That, that's my main concern, is yeah. that he's okay. Yeah. And he comes home to his, you know, his girlfriend, his partner, and yeah. his two children, and his mother and father, safe. Yeah, and hopefully with the belt. Oh, he'll have the belt. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's no doubt you know. Yeah. It's like uh, Manchester United. Yeah. They're certain of what they're going to win. Yeah. And this lad's got that bulldog's British spirit, you so, believe me. And you and tell you oh. what, Brian, you're just like Fergie. You'll never retire, will you? Right, thanks for You'll go much. down with the bricks. Good luck, yeah. Brian. We're all yeah. behind you. Right, I'll see you soon. Brian. Oh, the best, Mike. I really hope he can do it. It's going to be great if he does. Oh, it'd be lovely for him. It wasn't me who brought football into it this week. It was you heard it was Brian himself then, wasn't it? <laughs> but you know, did you spot the mistake there? I said for his belt, it's actually a vacant belt, isn't it? The vacant WBO. Belt, yeah. So, you, what time did you get off tomorrow morning? Half eleven. Half eleven. Yeah. Can't, can't wait. <laughs> and uh, Scott's got the camera, the seconds out camera, oh, to do a little uh, fly on the wall, which will show oh, you know right. whenever you get back. Yeah, good cool stuff. Next week or the week after. Brilliant. Well, it'd be great if he wins, wouldn't it? Ah, oh, yeah. that'd be fantastic for him. Especially for Mike, because he's a bit of a slow burning career. He wasn't one of them that was hyped and raved like early on, but he just, you know, stuck with it and mm. learnt his trade in the pros rather than sort of, you know, like a high class amateur. He was a good amateur, but he wasn't sort of a hot, an amateur turning pro in a ball of hype. But he's he stuck with his six rounders, eight rounders, ten, yeah. and, you know, and he's slowly learnt his trade and he turned into a, a really, really, really good fighter. Popular, and, popular lad as well, yeah. obviously. Like yourself, I mean, you know, if you don't go about sort of uh, being nasty to anyone in, in your <laughs> career and you sign autographs when you're asked and all that, people will like you, won't they? Ah, that's it. Good things will come to you. To come back to you. And that's, you know, you've got all this to come recently. Yeah. Have you been signing autographs yet? <laughs> um, funny enough, actually, like, in my barber shop the other week, uh, a little kid come in <laughs> and I was in a local paper and uh, he come in with the paper he asked me to sign his autograph. I was like, oh. that, do you know... You don't expect yeah. you know, things like that to come this soon. Right, you have to get used to it, because kids will ask anyone. They even ask me, do you know yeah. what I mean? So don't, don't you worry about <laughs> it. Honestly, you just you sign it, it's good, it's cute. Yeah. Right, lads, you've seen the show. We've run out of time, you've got to do the pads now, you know that, don't you? Yeah. I'm not looking, I don't look forward to this. Since, since uh, I can handle the little fellas, and that's, that's not being disrespectful. I've got bad hands anyway, so I'm going to tap you. <laughs> not oh, at the moment, but in the past. Right, right you're well. both orthodox, am I right? Yeah. So you need that one. Yeah. And, uh, right, who's going first? I'll take the left one, hey? I'll take the left one. Yeah? So oh, fair play. You're going to go easy on me. Yeah. Batman. <laughs> right, goes fast, doesn't it, when you come in? <laughs> the half hour. Go easy on me now, Reese. <laughs> Remember, we're pals. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, good, good. <laughs> yeah, good to put the other one or Can I go like that? Yeah, go on. It's going to be Joe Gallagher, isn't it? <laughs> That's where Joe puts it. Is it? So do just a jab? Yeah, just, just, a, just, just take it easy, you know. I'm tight. <laughs> <laughs> a lawsuit coming up there. Right, nice one, lads. Good luck with your fight. Right. Um, all the best with that uh, right, Battle cheers. of Birmingham. Yep, I'm sure you'll go on. Cheers, Reese, good luck, mate. Six and oh, it's going well for you. Right, that's it for this week. I'll be back with two more lads next week. Take care. Have a good week. Yeah, I'll speak to the other people.